Arab Tov Chavrim. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live, and we will be going over a series for the next few days, uh, looking into the breaking news and how it's matching up with prophecy, especially Daniel chapter 7, verse 23 says, uh, Thus he said, The fourth beast shall be the fourth kingdom upon the earth, which shall be diverse from all kingdoms, and shall devour the whole earth, and shall tread it down and break in pieces. The ten horns out of this kingdom are ten kings. We'll be going into that ten regions, the ten things, uh, are the, the ten kingdoms that are being set up here on the world today, uh, and, and how this is relating to prophecy in the news that's taking place as of right now. Uh, we, are, we are dealing with some very serious situations here, and it is really beginning to start to unravel what we're seeing on the world stage, all the different battles that are going on, whether it be the battle in Syria, whether it be NATO on Russia's doorsteps right now, in Europe, whether it be Ukraine, whether it be China over the South Sea, you're going to be getting into some of that even tonight. Okay, but before we get into that, quickly, a couple of things we're going to go, uh, we're going to run to and took, take a look at uh, Steve uh, Pachinik. I want to talk about that real quick, uh, but I want to remind you, those of you, I still get getting the emails in, uh, having trouble donating, people wanting to donate, can't seem to do it on our website. Please try there if you're able to, IsraeliNewsLive.org or IsraelReturns.com. At the end of this video, also we'll have our mailing address here in the Czech Republic. You can always do a check there. It's Danun Institute. Uh, but we will, again, we'll include inside the description a link. We'll just put on their donation, a direct link to our PayPal account where you can help there because, believe me, your help is what keeps us on the air. Thank you for that. All right, let me get off that subject. I hate talking about money. Let's get into Steve Pachinik. I want to talk to you real quick about this situation here. All right, and... Alex Jones has had Steve on many times, and I'm not here to throw Steve Pachinik underneath the bus. Let me explain to you what's going on, what's happening on our end. We have a lot of uh, people in different parts of government, military, other places all around the world, and as a result, we get all kinds of intel that comes from the different people in different hemispheres. We have people from the East, West, Europe, uh, people associated with Russia, you know, Israel, America, even the United Nations, we have contacts there as well. So we learn a lot of things that are going on. And after we originally released a video about Steve Pachinik and what he was saying about the soft coup, I got the intel from friends that we have that are high up in the military. They are retired, but they were saying, be careful, it's a PSYOP. It's a PSYOP that's going on. Now, I'm not against the idea of what he's saying and that they're trying to expose the Hillary campaign, the part of the WikiLeaks, things like that. I'm not against that at all. But as we begin to look in a little bit about Steve, and anybody, I mean, I know that Wikipedia is not the best place to go do your research on, but I was already told this by other people that know things, that yes, he worked under Henry, Kiss, uh, Henry Kissinger. You know, that he was involved in that. Uh, he's also a management of psychological warfare. He served uh, the presidential administrations of Gerald Ford, Jimmy Carter, Ronald Reagan, and George H.W. Bush in the capacity of deputy assistant secretary. The point is, and I think maybe this is where the friends that we have in those uh, circles there are, are warning us as far as a PSYOP, is that what the bigger part of the picture is that no matter who is elected president, Hillary Clinton, which I definitely don't want, and Donald Trump, which I like the idea that he's wanting to make peace with Russia and says we don't need a war, but the big picture is here, you're looking at a new world order, and Rome is rapidly bringing about that new world order, and I think that's even why the Pope of Rome keeps talking about peace. Yeah, he does look like the peacemaker. Why? Because the Pope of Rome is already as we know from what I shared with the other day about Daniel, he's made an alliance with this superpower, which was Great Britain at the time, which came over there and took over all the lands in the Middle East there during World War I, but he has divided up the land for gain. And this whole new world order is all being done underneath him. So yes, when we look over here, and this here is uh, Alex Jones here on, you know, he talks about Steve Pachinik here. 
uh, on, on his broadcast here, and he's playing that part of the video that we were playing as well, where he's talking about the soft coup. They're trying to expose Hillary. But what we're starting to realize as well is that they're trying to stop the Clintons from being in power, but it's all part of the New World Order. Who's going to get to control the North Atlantic Alliance, the North Atlantic Treaty there? All right, we're going to look into a little bit about that tonight. First, let me just kind of share with you another breaking news story here. One, uh, Lavrov, uh, Foreign Minister Lavrov of Russia, just announced that they're, they're doing another ceasefire in Aleppo, trying to give a chance to get some humanitarian aid in and also get the civilians out of there because it's a heavy battle going on. And they're saying to the Americans, you need to do your part and make, make your your thugs over there to back off, all right? Now, secondly, according to uh, Defense Minister Soigu, NATO leaves Russia and Belarus no choice but to respond. This is the heavy buildup of NATO troops there in uh, Poland, Latvia, Estonia, Lithuania, etc. They're having to get ready to respond with all these NATO troops being built up. Now, I said earlier, again, just like with the, case, the situation with Steve uh, Pachinik, I made the comment that NATO is a staged situation. Now, what I mean by staged, I'm not saying that, oh, it's fake, it's not going to happen, or it's just fake, I don't, I'll fake altogether. No, I mean it's real, but when I say staged, in a case like this, what I'm trying to, to get you to understand is that there's a reason for what they're doing here. It's not just, oh, the Russia, some big bad evil bear in America wants to take Russia out. It's part of a power struggle. But what I didn't catch, because I forgot about this, I forgot that, uh, let me see if I can find it here, this video here that I did myself Back in, uh, this is on February 1st, 2015. By the way, those of you that always ask me about uh, the dates, you know, Steve, put your dates in your video. The dates are there. See, right there. If you look right below the video, published on February 1st, 2015, all right? Now, in this video right here, I want you to listen a little bit about what I'm saying here because I was actually talking about the 10 regions of the world in this video here on this map here, but I've learned something new here just tonight that I'm going to share with you that's making all the wars that are happening right now, make it, it's, it's, it's starting to come to light of why things are really happening. Listen to what I say though on this one here and then this way here to give you a little bit of an idea the microphone out make sure we got the volumes all up on these things here we'll be able to hear it uh, because I want you to be able to know exactly what we were looking at ourselves on this right here take a listen here on the screen now of the 10 regions of the world that the way it would be divided up and it's very much a real it's a real situation that's going to happen now not only are they calling these areas uh, 10 sectors, they're also calling these areas 10 kingdoms. And they're, they've already planned, now this is the, the Club of Rome, you can look them up on the internet, they're easy to find, I think that's even their website is clubofrome.org or something of that nature there. You can find them in Wikipedia, they'll tell you about the members, uh, how they were established, it's easy to look this group up, uh, but most people do not know that this is a Vatican controlled group but clearly, they, they, they've already uh, there's Pope's behind all of it. decided on who would be the ten kings for the Club of Rome. Now, this here is speculation. We can't say for sure exactly does this represent Daniel's vision or is it another ten right. kingdoms or whatever. But it is kind of our... I wanted to get you to that point right there just so you can see. We've actually gone into this before. And the one thing that I did even back then was I recognized that... In order for them to re-divide up all the world here, they've got to create unrest, wars. Remember what Yeshua says? Jesus says, whichever name you use, I'm, I, I'm used to Yeshua, but Jesus, I say it for those that don't understand, he actually makes the statement in Matthew 24 that there will be wars and rumors of wars, but be ye not troubled, for this is not the end as of yet. Because why? He knew, according to Daniel's prophecy in chapter 7, they're going to divide up this world into ten kingdoms, the ten horns. Remember those horns that Daniel speaks about? And it says that he says,
says those are kingdoms. Also, look at the ten toes in the, in the vision of Daniel. In the image there at the foot, it's made out of iron and clay. My wife actually mentioned recently, she says maybe the clay represents the people themselves. In other words, they can't fully get this new world order to stand because the clay is mixed in there. Even though there's that iron fist of Rome beating down on the people, the people still upset the whole program. Well, we're seeing that already just with the things that are happening here. All right, but let me share with you something else. This is interesting, and then we're going to really get into this because I, I'm just, I am blown away. I can't wait to share with you some things here that we're going to be looking at here. Let me just see where I'm at here, what I've got. Okay, I know what that is right there. Um, I tell you what, we're going to go to this, and then that should have actually been, Putin should have been put there. Let me put this right here. Now, on the video, I speak about the Club of Rome. In 1973, the Club of Rome released a report entitled Limits to Growth, which dealt with the problem of overpopulation. Okay, that's what they did then. But what I want to focus on in here for the sake of time is the map that the Club of Rome brings out. There's all, by the way, the one, there's one that I used to use quite a bit was after World War II. The map they had there, that's where Russia takes over a lot more of Europe and less of Europe was for, was for the European Empire. Okay, but anyway, they come up with a map here on this particular part here when they uh, the club of rome does of what the new world order or what the world would look like when it gets divided up into the into the different regions there and that's what i'm trying to get down to here maybe it was up the other way my apology here let me just find here here it is oh, yeah it was a little bit further up now this is what i wanted to share with you first this is when the club of rome first divided up or one of, one of the early maps that they divide the world up into 10 regions. All right, now, I want you to look carefully. As you can see here on the map here, we've got, well, better not stand up, Steve, nobody see you. All right, you have the whole North American treaty, the North American alliance there, was there, all right? At that time, Mexico and everything goes to South America. Russia ends up with, uh, they end up with all their territory in the north there, but they end up with Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania. They end up with Poland. They end up with Belarus, which Belarus would gladly go in because they're like cousins anyway. Ukraine, all right? Now, let me share with you some other ones there because I don't remember. I think it's Serbia and Mongolia, if I remember right. Uh, just let's take a look right there. Yes, here we go, right here. All right. So... What we see here is they end up with Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania, Poland, Ukraine, Belarus, Moldova, Romania, and Bulgaria. All those there would have become part of the Russian Empire. Okay? As well, Kazakhstan and Mongolia. Now, I happen to have that little marker right there. One of my inside sources just shared with me the other day that that particular place right there is called Astana in Kazakhstan. And as you can see, this, this, this is the, uh, the, the, uh, the Capitol building there, the, like the White House for America. That's supposed to be the capital of the New World Order. Now, whether or not it's going to be or not, I don't know. I kind of think they're going to make Jerusalem the capital where the Pope will actually rule from Jerusalem. Okay, that's my thought. All right, now... Let's go back to this New World Order map that I shared with you here, though. Now, pay attention to some things here. It's very important. Here, we have Turkey, according to the 1973 map, is part of the European kingdom, all right? Along also out here with uh, um, Iceland, not Greenland. I, I get the names mixed up sometimes. Sorry about that. And then... The Middle East, what we have here, we have Iraq, you have Iran, you have Syria, you have Jordan, Israel, uh, you have uh, Egypt, you have, um, just quickly show you here on the regular map, all right, we have Egypt, Libya, Algeria, Morocco, Tanzania, Jordan, Israel, Syria, Iraq, Saudi Arabia, Yemen, uh, uh, 
Kumam, Iran, all of those end up being another part of their own empire. Okay, so looking at that, but here's another interesting one. Keep in mind right here, China gets this here. China also gets North Korea, but not South Korea. South Korea goes to Japan. But you notice the islands here are part of that Indian, the Indian Empire right there. All right? And then Australia gets the southern parts of Africa here, and then Africa by itself has its own middle section in there too. So now let's begin to look at something. Before I get into the issue with Russia and what's going on with NATO, let's look at a couple of problems right now because they've redefined the map. All right? The map was there, but it's been redefined in 2006. But just on the China side, these islands that are off over here on China's here, this is why China's fighting for the right of some of these islands here. But the U.S. is saying no, because that belongs to like the, you know, uh, let's, let's take a look at it on the regular map so we can get the names here all in order. All right, if we go over here to China, so Taiwan... The disputed islands in the China Sea here, they're either to go to Taiwan or they're supposed to be going to Japan. And yet China is fighting for those islands. They want it, but it's not supposed to be part of their territory. But they're trying to say that it is. All right, That's supposed to be part of that Indian territory that they're creating in that part of the region of the world. So what's happening in this new world order, there is a struggle for power. And we haven't even got to all of it yet. But keep in mind, Turkey in 1973 was supposed to be part of the European Empire. And this is why Erdogan has been fighting to get moved into the European Union. I think it's because he's supposed to be the guy over that one. I think they promised him the power over that. And one of my sources that had the inside connection with uh, uh, Gulen Phelan said to me, that he was promised to be a, a, a great ruler in this new world order if he did the dirty work for the U.S. But they said there's been a power struggle even with that. That's why I believe the coup was staged by, or the, 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 the coup was actually a staged event. Now I could be wrong on that. Maybe it wasn't. But when I say staged, again, like the thing about NATO, it wasn't that there wasn't a real coup and it wasn't that there was real fighting and people dying in it. The problem was, was who did it and why they did it, okay? Now, we're looking at this. We, now, as we go back and we look at Russia, before I'm going to share something else with you here, I want to show you what happened. Now, you might look, oh, that's just a website, brother, you know. Uh, they're just saying it was, uh, you know, the Club of Rome and stuff. But let me give you an official document, all right? Let's take an official document. This right here, we're on page 55 of this document here, but I'm going to show you first what document this is. This is the PDF itself from the Millennium Development Goals Report of the United Nations, an official 2009 report, but in 2006 is when they did the map up. This is their official report on the New World Order, parts of the New World Order, how it's going to be done, the economic uh, sustainable development plan, etc. All that is here. All right. Now, but on page 55, this is where they break down the map. Now, from 1973 to 2006, the regions have changed, but not North America. The United States, Alaska, Greenland, that all stayed the same. Mexico and stuff still stayed part of South America. All right? Even over here, that pretty much stayed the same. The only thing is Australia doesn't get South Africa. Australia ends up becoming, and so does New Zealand, becomes, ends up becoming a part of the Europe group here, which all comes underneath the United States from what it looks like on this. Okay? The development, developed regions, as they call it. No, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That could be different because the colors are very close to the same in some cases here. But anyway, Russia, and this is what I want you to notice on here on Russia. Russia has lost several territories. Okay? And this map right here, and let me blow it up so we can see the part I'm talking about. 
Okay. Russia actually is going to lose, has lost some uh, places. Belarus still stays part of their area. Okay, but Belarus would do it willingly. Okay. Ukraine is supposed to be part of their area as well. But now they're fighting to put Ukraine into the European Union. But they lost Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania, and Poland. Remember those times where President Putin has said that the leaders are not playing by, the, our partners are not playing by the rules? You know, I had begun to think maybe Putin was being a halfway decent guy. Because I noticed that Putin had started coming out and saying that he was exposing the New World Order. He kicked out the Rothschilds out of his country. And then recently, one of my sources shared with me that the BRICS, the new economic BRICS system that we have going on, he said, Steve, it's the New World Order's economy. BRICS is not some rogue renegade thing that's causing the world to go to war because of the failing economy of the United States. It is they are putting in place their plan for the new economic system, and BRICS is part of that system. I didn't know that. Now, he lost Estonia, Lithuania, and Latvia, and he lost, loses Poland, but he did gain a couple of extra countries right here, just south of Mongolia, all right? So, again, let's take a look at what he gains. He got Uzbekistan. He got Kazakhstan. All right. And uh, Georgia, of course, as well. I think he already had Georgia anyway, though. All right. Um, yes. Looks like he has Georgia. So, you know, we go back and we see. Uh, let me see if Georgia actually falls into that. I can see it's close, but. No, he doesn't get Georgia. Well, you, wait a minute, wait a minute. Maybe he does, maybe he does. It's hard to tell on these maps when they're colored like that. Yes, Georgia actually becomes, maybe. Uh, again, it's hard to see, it's hard to, it's hard to see that. Um, okay. Yes, Georgia actually becomes part of his area. Georgia, Uzbekistan, uh, Kragistan, uh, and that looks, and of course, Kazakhstan as well. All right, those all become part of the Russian group right there. Now, back, even back when the Ukrainian conflict was going on, that's when I actually released this video and I talked about the 10 kingdoms, the 10 toes, and how that, you know, even Ukraine looks like that they, it's part of a war to where they're supposed to get it. But from what we're seeing now, they're disputing. There is a power struggle for who's going to get what in this new world order. I want to share with you something that I never picked up on before that Putin says himself. Watch this right here. This is on a video here. I want you to see. This is going to be a journalist. Ask him. I assume it's a journalist. I don't know what the guy, who the guy is for sure. But he asked him this question here. Let's take a listen. It doesn't look a very plausible one, certainly in the short term. Um, we've, we've all talked about the breakdown of the global order, and, and President Putin has talked about the threat of multiplying conflicts if that continues. Uh, the two questions in, in one which I'd like to ask is, first of all, whether uh, you consider, President Putin, Russia's own actions in Ukraine and Crimea um, over the past few months to be a response to that breakdown of rules and a sort of example of a no rules order. And the second part of the question is really um, now, whether what's taken place. This Did you notice his words? It's a global order. And he asked, is it a breakdown of the rules? Why? Why does he say it like that? Because he knows that according to the map, Ukraine belongs to him. He knows that he was supposed to take it. And again, I've said this before, I believe it's done by military intervention. But the thing was, I don't know if they really intended this to go out into an all-out wars like they're doing now. But the CIA came and they're trying to steal Ukraine from him. 
And it's funny. It's funny I even say it like this, steel or things like that. I mean, the whole New World Order system to begin with is nothing but uh, a demonic antichrist beast system to begin with. Yeshua clearly talks about this in Matthew 24. Daniel speaks about it in his own prophecy. So every bit of it is wicked and evil from the very beginning. But now I'm starting to understand why the fights are happening. Just like with Erdogan, for example. Look what happens with Erdogan. He loses being part of the European Union. Instead, now they're going to put him over uh, Iraq, Syria, Jordan, Saudi Arabia, Yemen, and these areas here. Or, or was that supposed to be the Saudis' kingdom? And now Erdogan is like, wait a minute, because Erdogan's fighting to be part of the Europe because he wants to be in Europe in order to be back to the 1973 map. And I think maybe that has a lot to do with why there was a refugee crisis and they sent them to Europe. Because why? If Erdogan was part of the 73 map, again, let's drop back and take a look at the 73 map. We've got to find the thing again. Uh, in the 1973 map, we see that Turkey is part of Europe. And if they created a refugee crisis and sent the Sunni refugees into Europe, it gives Erdogan easy ability to stay in power because they put all the Sunni refugees into Europe, which gives him more flexibility with controlling everything that happens there. In fact, there's a, they've got huge areas in Germany that are under, they got Turkish flags hanging everywhere. I thought the refugees were from Syria. Why is there huge flags and stuff hanging there from Turkey if they're supposed to be Syrian refugees? Erdogan was expecting that to be part of his kingdom. That's what he was going to get. A revived Ottoman Empire, so to speak. So it kind of gives him a little bit of his glory days. And the Saudis, no doubt, are getting all of this with the Pope of Rome ruling in Israel. All right? That's what it looks like to me. I could be wrong on that. I don't know. We'll have to see. Now, I say Israel is part of that. It's hard for me to be able to see whether or not, let me just zoom in a little bit closer on this, uh, whether or not Israel, um, oh, there it is. Israel may be a different color. And if it is, it looks like it's the color of the African area there. Uh, so that may be what the Pope decides to run himself. I can't quite tell the color of Israel in that particular map. But if we go back over to this one here, Israel stays in the same color where Saudis, Turkish, all that is under one empire. And that may be what Erdogan's not happy about either. So he's kind of fighting for his own piece of the pie, but you got to remember, they're dividing this up into 10 kingdoms, no matter which way it goes. But like I'm saying, now I'm starting to understand why the disputes. Now watch what Putin says, so though, in response down, on this. Uh, of a rule system. Does that signal, uh, from Russia's point of view, a shift in Russia's global position? It's been said here in the past couple of days that Russia can't lead in the uh, in the current global order, but it can decide who leads. I wondered whether that's your own view. I would ask you to rephrase your second question. What, what was your second question, actually? The, the point is that uh, that it's been said here that uh, that Russia can't aspire to a, a leading position in the world, given the circumstances in the aftermath. They get a leading position in the world. Uh, but that, that it can decide who will be the leader and that there might be a shift in Russia's global position and orientation as a result of this global breakdown. The, the speculation is about, you know, as you mentioned yourself, relations with the Far East and a new system of global alliances around that. Russia has never changed its orientation. We are a, a country of a traditional, traditional tastes. Uh, we are oriented toward cooperation and toward a joint search of solutions. We don't presume for um, 
We, we don't presume to be global leaders. We don't aspire for global leadership. This uh, argument that Russia seeks global domination, that is just false. We don't, like I said, we don't demand a special role for us. We just believe that all international players uh, should respect each other's interests. Uh, we are ready to respect our counterparts' interests, but we would like to see similar interests for our opinions, for our attitude. We have okay. expressed our opinions on the situation in the Middle East. If you notice what he said there. We're not seeking for the global dominance. In other words, they're not wanting to be the chief ruler in this new world order. And notice even on the sign there, it's the world order. The word order is in behind his head, but as he talked, you could see him moving around. You see it's the world order, or the new world order is what this is all about. All right? But as Putin is stating in right here, he's also saying that the others that are involved in this are, are to respect his rights. So... When Putin began to talk about that he was against the New World Order and that he threw out the Rothschilds, well, he threw out the Rothschilds because the whole New World Order system was going to a new banking system in the first place. That's something I didn't know at the time. I just found that out in the last few days. All right. But when he said he was going against the New World Order and the Illuminati, I'm only finding out that that was because he was he's angry at the situation the way it's going. They keep taking territory from Russia that's supposed to be part of the New World Order. And that's why he's now is, is coming down to a fight. Russia didn't want to go into a fight like this. But undoubtedly, there's some keep their players in here. What is it? I believe as Henry Kissinger talks about out of the out of World War III will come a global new world order. All right? And this is what's happening. But I don't think Russia knew that they were intending on picking the fight with them. And not only that, that they're fighting to get more territory for the European Union. And this is what I see happening in here. And this is what's very, very bad. Kissinger, by the way, becomes Russia's Academy of Science member. This just happened on October the 28th. So we know back in February of this year, he delivers President Putin a brand new New World Order plan. I'm going to be sharing that and more of these things with you later this week. But Putin at the time was already blasting the New World Order. It looked like he might be a guy to stop all this. Now, he puts Kissinger involved in Russia's, uh, sci uh, becomes Russian Academy of Science member, can't help but wonder now if maybe Putin's not had a change of face and is starting to play along with the New World Order. You see, friends, what's been troubling me, even with the, the whole issue with uh, President Bashar al-Assad in Syria, that man seems to be just thrown under the bus. Does he really know what's going on? Because I would notice that Putin is there supposedly to protect him, but when it comes to Turkey, Erdogan, President Putin seems to play both sides of the fence. That has just really kind of troubled me. So I didn't really know what was going on there. And this is a lot what we're trying to do. We're trying to figure these things out, especially from a biblical aspect, a biblical perspective. What is happening in this area, era, area and all these things that are going on, which uh, another issue in this too, when we look at this whole global region and this order here, is what's going to happen to Israel? You know, UNESCO is saying that the Temple Mount is not Jewish. They keep saying everything that, they, everything that Israel holds dear to, the United Nations has blasted it away and said it doesn't belong to Israel. They say it's Abrahamic, it's Arabic, it's Islamic, etc. All those things are happening. Why? Because according to the 2006 map, Israel becomes part of a Saudi Turkish kingdom. Now, who's going to be the head of that kingdom? Looks like the Pope of Rome, according to Daniel's prophecy, where it says they will build their, their palace between the, the sea and the holy mountain. Many that we'll be bringing out, well, also in this series, we'll be bringing out Gog of Magog as well. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Shalom.